What is up, everyone? We are here with the first graduate of Creator Pro or female graduate of Creator Pro Wrestling and current AEW superstar, Chris Statlander. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? We are great, thank you. And obviously, we love the shirt. Yes, thank you. Everyone go get go get your Brody shirts. If you haven't already, everyone head over to ProWrestlingTees.com. Either hit up Brody Lee's web, or shirts uh, website, uh, CM Punk, Mick Foley, or there's a, a few others that are donating their uh, proceeds for the month to uh, Brody Lee's family. So go get on it. And uh, we will head right into this first. We'll say hi to uh, we'll say hi to Zach first. Zach, what's up? Oh, all the pressure. I'm leading off today. How are you, Jacob? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, Chris. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, first of all, hopefully recovery's going well, and hopefully we'll see you back in the ring sooner rather than later. Uh, just first off for you, just I, I noticed you had a tattoo that said pain is weakness leaving the body. Just what got you, whether it be the Marines thing or just the statement itself, what did you like about that message and what it sent? Um, that was actually my very first tattoo. I think I got that when I was 17. Um, I It's not necessarily a marine thing it's just something one of my old gymnastics coaches would actually tell me all the time so it just kind of i don't know it's just something that resonated with me uh with you know continuing to push through all the pain the agony the sweat tears everything it just it's just like a motivational quote that's really kept me going to push harder than i probably should ever be and especially now with uh, my recovery i'm definitely pushing way harder than i need to be um but I just do it because I know I'm going to come out stronger in the end and be stronger for tomorrow. Out of curiosity, did you have any interaction with Brody and what were your interactions with him, if at all, like? Um, so I didn't get as much uh, interaction as, like, obviously people of the Dark Order. Uh, I unfortunately, it was mostly just, like, high and buys and passing and whatnot. You know, we uh, I was injured most of the time that he was there. Um, I think he debuted pretty recently or like recently upcoming to me being injured. And then there was a very long time where I got injured and I uh, wasn't even at, I was a backstage or anything. I was just at home recovering from surgery and everything. So I didn't get um, a chance to really interact with him or just appreciate him being there as much as everyone else did. But um He's still part of the AEW family. We're all a big family, and it's still like the fact that he got to be a part of that family with us, even though it was a very short-lived amount of time. Uh, um, it was just a great experience overall. And the last one I have for you, Chris, is if you had to pick a couple matches for people to watch of you that really tell who you feel you identify with as a wrestler, whether it be the alien, whether it be your in-ring work, just what kind of matches would you pick for people to watch and why? Um, I would probably say more so for now, at least, uh, anything that you can find on YouTube, um, a lot more of me being just me, uh, hasn't fully been, uh, adventured and expressed yet at AEW and that's still be fine because I just leave wanting more and I'll get there, especially now that I'm injured, I have to sort of rebuild all that stuff and re-represent who I am. Um, so I would, I would more recommends stuff I've done on the independence for people to see. I've done um, a very wide variety of matches uh, from super intense feuds that have led to um, some hardcore matches. Like I've done an unsanctioned match. I've done a cage match, um, a, a last creature standing match. Uh, I believe those really like show what I can do just outside of just in ring work um a lot of intergender matches i've done which are also up on youtube uh can also really help bring out the another side of me as a performer but then there's also another one on youtube where um i wrestled a girl uh who unfortunately isn't wrestling anymore she's retired just due to amounts of injuries um and she kind of did like a whole like star wars type thing so we did a whole match, not touching each other once, completely using the fourth. And the only time we touched each other was for the final pin for the finish. And it just shows a whole another side of like what you're able to do with a character. 
So, like I said, I have a very wide variety of stuff where I'm getting color, and then I'm doing another super goofy but pretty entertaining match where I don't even touch my opponent at all. So, lots of stuff to look up. <laughs> I'll definitely have to watch that one. Chris, again, continued well wishes. Stay safe, stay healthy, and again, hopefully see you in a ring soon. And thanks as always, Jacob. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll say hi to uh, Johnny. What's up, Johnny? Hey, how are you? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so, Chris, my first curious question is, um, did you grow up always a wrestling fan? Like, uh, die hard? Like, have you gone back and watched, like, the entire, like, anthology of, like, wrestling? <laughs> uh, no, actually. Um, I did not start watching wrestling until after I had started training, surprisingly. I know some people are like, oh, my God, how do you not know everything? I... My dad was a really big fan, and because I was a gymnast, he would show me, like, Rey Mysterio, because he always did all flips and stuff, and he was like, look, he does stuff like you, and I was like, cool, dad. I was just also <laughs> so busy with gymnastics and training that, like, I just never really had time to really sit down and get into certain things in television, um, but I just, because this is probably going to come up at some point of how I got into wrestling. I met friends that were wrestlers in college when I went to school um, for athletic training and physical therapy, which I did not finish. Uh, and then I told them I was dropping out, uh, but they came to do shows where I live nearby. And they're like, oh, we can just bring you in as like a valet or a manager. So I was doing that for two years before I even started training. I, the only wrestling I watched was the matches that were that I was involved with or that were on the show. I never looked into it any otherwise, had no idea what was going on. I just showed up and did what they told me to do. And then eventually I was just like, I'll try it, see what happens. And well, here I am. <laughs> Currently I'm pretty good. So are you like, um, are, I'm not saying obviously you're not a fan, but I mean like, are you, do you watch wrestling? Are you, is this just more like a job or is this just like, are you like a fan now or do you have like passion in like wrestling? Um, I would say I am more of a fan now, but I feel like I have a different perspective on how I approach everything in wrestling because I didn't grow up a fan. So I don't have that little like, oh my God, there's this person over here. Oh my God, I'm this person. Like to me, it is a job, but I still, I still watch it when I'm at home, especially when when i'm injured there's nothing else for me to do besides watch tv um i will definitely look into matches uh, i watch i don't really have specifics of what i watch but i do watch wrestling now i am a fan but like i said i still have that like this wasn't my whole life's dream growing up it's just something that i fell into and kind of happened to be good at it so but like any person that wants to succeed in anything you're going to research and you're going to look into what you can do to make yourself better so i'm definitely more absolutely. Of a fan now absolutely. my whole life absolutely well i mean i must say i mean uh you know i was i've always been an old wwf fan back in the day all i watched was like old school wrestling and uh, i've kind of gotten back into it the last couple of years and actually the host here was the one who introduced me to aew and uh you know after i started watching you know, regardless, I didn't know your history or, um, you know, again, what the question I just asked, but I find it fascinating that uh, I find you very extremely talented and I definitely know you belong in this business and I would definitely like to see you succeed and do uh, better in the company. I haven't seen you on TV for a while and it's kind of sad because you're my absolute favorite in AEW, and I believe that uh, you should be the next uh, AEW Women's Champion for sure. There's no doubt in my mind anyway. So I'll keep watching, and I'll keep uh, rooting for you and hope that uh, you get to that status at some point because uh, I see it as a very well-deserving you know, thing that uh, I would see you making it a great champion. And you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the gimmick, but at the same time, I do like it, so... Just uh, keep doing your thing, and I'm sure you'll you'll do very well in the business, nonetheless. And uh, thank you for thank all you. the uh, entertainment. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for being such a fan. I appreciate yeah. it a lot. Thank you, awesome. Johnny. Yeah, you take care. All right. <laughs> uh, Chris, I'm going to play a little intro, and uh, my little buddy Steven's going to come on and ask you a couple questions.
Hi, Chris. Thank you for doing this. It means so much to me. Uh, I want to say thank you so Hi. much. Before I start, I want to say thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you. So my first question thank is... Thank you for speaking to me. What? Pardon? I said thank you for speaking to me. Thank you. Um, what does it... First question is, what does it mean to you to to be the the first female granted graduated of create created pro wrestling academy? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, partially, I think it means that I'm the first female or the first girl to be tough enough to stick through it, but it also it was a pretty new school when I joined. So um, it just means a lot to hopefully set the bar for all the girls that are yet to come and go through doing a good enough job to give the school a name uh, of recognition. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Second question is why did you decide to switch from being a stunt devil to wrestling to a wrestler, and how does it differ? Um, how I became uh, went from stunt doubling to wrestling. Um, with stunt doubling, you have to get your you have to pay a lot of money to get this certificate called this or to join this thing called the sag after union in order to be able to work on like tv and movies and i didn't have enough money at the time to um to pay for that uh so i didn't really i wasn't able to get a lot of work in doing that and going from that to wrestling it's very similar in the whole like fight scene aspect but believe it or not stunt doubling is a lot safer than wrestling the last and third question is, today is the one year anniversary of Pandemodian here in Toronto, which, which is an all women wrestling show. In 10 years, where would you like to see women's wrestling be in comp comparison to men's? Uh, where do I want to see women's wrestling in 10 years compared yeah. to men's wrestling? Um, I want to definitely see more common, uh, females being able to be main eventers. I feel like there's still not quite yet enough females strong enough to carry entertainment throughout an entire main event, have people wanting to feel like that's the big match of the show. And I feel like we just got to keep working hard in order to get there. Um, so hopefully more girls are going to be more motivated than ever to get to that position where it's not so uncommon or so much of a special feature to have girls be in the main event. Okay, once again, thank you for spending time to talk with me. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Steven. Bye. <laughs> uh, usually he waves. Um, I didn't have this on my my list to ask you, Chris, but um, recently, and of course, there's been a lot of talk about wrestlers unionizing and maybe even joining SAG. Uh, as someone who knows the in, maybe a little bit of the ins and outs of SAG, do you think that's a feasible option for wrestlers, or do you think it's just a, a lost cause? Uh, I it's it's hard to say because it wouldn't be like just the major companies that have to work with. Uh, like it, it's not like there's one big company that owns wrestling. You know what I mean? Like we have a yeah. few really big companies. We have a few TV companies all over the world, plus thousands of smaller ind independent promotions. And to have just one person to have to set the rules and set, set all the boundaries for every single thing that goes on in wrestling, where even now, like in states, like in separate states, there's some, time, some states you need a license in order to wrestle. Some states you don't. I feel like there's just such, it's it's so, the business kind of just is what it is. Uh, and that's it, how it's been for 
years now, it'd be so hard to somewhat change. I do. I think every wrestler sort of sort of fancies the idea of being able to get benefits and whatnot. Um, get like set pay and everything. But a lot of people that come into wrestling don't always want it to be their job for life. A lot of people don't like want to just do it for fun or have it as like a side thing that they do. Um, but with um, the whole SAG after a union, it to you have to become eligible in order to um, be able to apply to join the union. And the only way I've known how to done it and how I've done it personally is you have to get like three union jobs uh, working as either an extra on television or get like a speaking role on television. Um, and you know, there's a lot of background actors and people in acting that are trying to do that right now. And then once you're eligible, there's the union fees and like the initiation fee is like $3,000, at least in New York it was. So not every wrestler is just going to have $3,000 to join a union when, you know, it is like you can get paid $10 to wrestle on an independent show and it's nearby your house and you have to just drive an hour where it, it's just not feasible. I feel at the moment, it's a great idea, but if this was if like, if wrestling was brand new and we were trying to form a union for it and trying to establish all the set rules and everything for wrestling, it'd be a lot easier, but it's hard to change something that's existed for so long now. Of course. Thank you. And uh, we will say hi to uh, John Perry. What's up brother? Hey, I've been waiting for this day to meet Miss ADW, of course. <laughs> Big fan of yours. Oh, thank you. I follow you on Twitter, Instagram, everything. Wow. That's and I wish different. I could get an art I wish I could get an autograph from you. That would make my day. They have autographs at high spots, I believe. There's some on sale. They're not personalized, but they're there's there's some for sale who inspired you to wrestle like some would say thunder rosa um who and i don't i don't really know uh i some wrestling is sort of something i just kind of came into on my own and just, just sort of decided to try so i feel like my my will to try new things and branch out and experience new things is like it's almost myself that inspired me to wrestle i don't know if that's makes me sound like i have a huge ego or something but it wasn't really a specific person that i wanted to portray or take after it was just me just me and when you get back i hope you go for that woman's title the AEW title that um mm -hmm. I think it's Shira. Is it Shira that's holding it? Yeah, Sheeta. She's the one that has yes. it right. Hope you go for that when you get back. And how's your injury coming along? It's it's going. It's a really serious injury. So it, it, I would say my knee is probably close to being healed, but there's still such an extensive and long recovery process just to make sure it's ready to go. Um, so it takes... Sometimes it takes people up to a year to fully get back to where they want to be. So it's it's coming along for sure. We miss you in AEW. Thank you. I miss it so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Jacob, for having her. Uh, have a good night, buddy. You too. We will say hi to uh, Dennis. Dennis, what's up, brother? Hey, not too much. You hear me? Yep. Uh all right, Chris, how you doing? Uh, glad to see you're on the road to recovery. Thank you. And so, so two questions here. One's wrestling and one's a little bit more fun. Now, my wrestling-related question is, what was is the one thing that has really surprised you the most about working for a uh, company that's on national TV like AEW? Ooh, one thing that surprises me about working for a, a TV company. Um, I don't know. It's, I feel like my perspective has always been you sh every single match you wrestle, every single time that you have wrestled, you should 
uh, perform at your best. Like there's no days off. Uh, you should be performing like you would on TV as if the whole world were watching you. So uh, I think maybe the thing that surprises me the most is about how nice everyone is, maybe. Okay. I feel like you wouldn't expect everyone to be so like fun and just willing to work with each other and it to be like a big family. And I think that's probably the most surprising thing. Usually it seems like it'd be very stressful, but it's been great. And then here, quick, awesome. And then this question's a little bit more fun. Um, two parter. And what is your fa- What is your favorite TV alien? And then your favorite movie alien, and why? Oh, TV alien. I'm a big fan of Roger from American Dad because uh, he's funny. He's got a lot of nice. Now. And you know, how could you not love Roger? Uh, my favorite movie aliens, you got to go with the, the classic, the xenomorphs from Alien. I personally think they're adorable and cute and precious, and I love them, uh, no matter how scary they are. I don't know. We, I just watched the whole like trilogy again pretty recently, like a few, like a week ago. I love them. I think they're, I would have one as a pet if I could. That's just me. Awesome. My uh, my votes for uh, TV would be Alf, and then my vote for uh, movie would be the Aliens from Mars Attacks. But that's just me. So, <laughs> and that's so. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, we all got our preferences. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Thanks. We will uh, say hi to uh, Aaron next. Aaron, what's up, brother? Hi, Chris. Nice shirt. I ordered mine on uh, Pressing Tees. Rest in peace, Mr. Brody Lee. Um, my question. Oh, um, I had a nice shirt. I ordered that one on a uh, progressing tees and rest in peace to Mr. Brody Lee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my question for you is, um, which member of the women's division, of the AW roster would you like to face once you're fully recovered? Could you say that one kind of with the sound? It keeps kind of breaking up a little bit. So oh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, he keeps cutting in and out. Um, did he? What or uh, who? Uh, what woman would you like to wrestle when you get back from uh, your injury in AEW? Okay. Um, ooh. Who do I? I obviously Serena Deeb. I would love to wrestle her for sure. Um. Oh, I don't know. I guess she's my number one right now. I, I guess I kind of have to say Sheeta. I want to wrestle Sheeta so I can get the belt, but that's that's a given, obviously. But definitely Serena is one person I want to wrestle. Well, I think that'd be a physical contest. I hope that uh, happens one day. And uh, good luck with the rest of your uh, injury recovery. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. You're welcome. We will, uh, next, we'll say hi to uh, Adam. Adam, what's up, man? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is my first time here, and so I'm really stoked. Um, this is such a great service, so thank you, Jacob. Um, so Chris, um, huge fan, huge, huge fan, and I uh, just can't wait for you to be back on AEW. And kind of on that note, what would you say is the most frustrating uh, thing about being out? Most frustrating thing about being out, I would say is sitting at home and watching everybody else seem like they're having a great time without you. It's like on, being on the outside, looking in from like a party or something like that. Uh, especially when it's something that you love to do and you feel like you were really just starting to get to the top of your game and then just had it all stripped away from you. It's, it sucks. Um, the hardest part, I mean, like besides just watching everybody else going out there and killing it, the hardest part is that, trying to accept that it's not my fault uh, and that my it just takes time to recover and I hate I hate that I can't do everything that I want to do and it's just frustrating feeling like you're you're sort of letting everybody down and like not just like people that you work for work with but like the fans too and I just feel like I've disappointed everyone and I have to accept that I didn't do it on purpose it's not like I just say hey i'm leaving bye it's my i don't know 
I, something just happened and I have to just accept that it is what it is and just keep moving forward. Absolutely. And, you know, obviously I'm mirroring what everyone else has said so far. We can't wait to have you back. Um, so my second question is, um, what would you say is the most challenging match of your career so far? Uh, in AEW or just in general in life? Just in general, in, in the indies or in AEW. Uh, most challenging match. I mean, they're all kind of challenging. It's, you know, it's a physical challenge, really, technically. Um, I would say any of the more, uh, I would say more of the hardcore match type things. Like I, I mentioned earlier, like the, the last creature standing or the unsanctioned match because you have to I feel like so many things like there's only so much you can do when you implement like weapons or something into a match but trying to figure out what's not been done before um, how to make like how to add things to your own move set to sort of um, you know keep it within like something that you would do and then just make it more hardcore, I guess. Uh, that's a challenge. It's a challenge trying to put that together. But to me, it's also so fun because figuring out matches is almost like putting a puzzle together. And also on a bigger challenge is just trying to do all that stuff as a woman. And how do I make it look like I'm not just taking the easy way out with, oh, I'm just hitting someone in the back with a chair. Like, how do I make it still look like a thing that the guys have done and how can I try and one if my opponent is willing to, you know, go as crazy as I am. But that's probably those any any of my heart is definitely like trying to have to one up everybody else that's already done it is my biggest challenge myself. Absolutely. And uh, my last question is, um, while I definitely don't uh, agree with the criticism of the AEW women's division, but what are your thoughts on that criticism? Just, you, just, just kind of talk about that. Um, I mean, there's parts to agree to and not to agree to. I think it's valid to accept criticism, but people also have to remember that almost every single girl that got signed or is a part of the AEW women's roster has never worked on TV before. Uh, a lot of men on the roster have worked on TV or if they haven't, they're working with people who have been on TV before. So we're just kind of learning as we go right now. Um, we're trying our hardest. We do trainings before TV every single time there's taping. So people that think we're just sitting on our butts and just hoping things are going to be handed to us. Like we're trying as hard as we can. There's only so much we can do. And there's only so much time that we can get in a two hour stream or a two hour TV. And yes, there's dark, uh, obviously, but it's not live TV. Um, and you know, it's like, we're, we're like, people need to give it time. It's the company's been around for just over a year now. And a lot of these girls, are, including myself, have are working on TV for the first time and are still learning it. And we're not doing matches every single week, all of us. So um, I think it's fair to accept that we are being criticized because I believe that we can all do better. But Rome wasn't built in a day. A lot of these girls that were assigned have, have not been working for 15 years, you know? It's, it's just going to take time and people have to accept that. And people, we're trying, everyone's trying, and it sucks that I can't be a part of it right now and trying my best to help out. But that's what I have to say about it. For sure. And uh, I mean, yeah, the, the AEW Women's Division is certainly, I love it. I certainly love it. And so just keep up the, you know, can't wait to see you again. But, you know, um, and just thank you. Just it's really an honor to be talking with you. So thank you. Thank you for being a fan. Thank you, Adam. Um, Chris, there's a lot of good talent coming out of Creative Pro Wrestling Academy. Uh, what's the uh, the secret sauce there? Yeah. Uh, we have the best trainers in the world. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that I is that Kurt Hawkins and and Pat Buck? Yeah, those are the two head trainers. But we also um, 
have a lot of our more experienced students uh, helping train as well. Uh, I think it's just, I don't know. Uh, I feel like a lot of, I mean, I haven't trained at other schools, so I don't know what training is like in other places, but I feel like just the way, I don't know, there's just something about the way that we are taught, I guess, that just sticks out to people. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I feel like it's a lot of places and wrestling schools uh, they almost try to scare you away from becoming a wrestler. And it is, it is not cut. Not everyone is cut out for wrestling. It is extremely difficult. And ever, anyone that has ever tried it can admit it that like, it's not like you can't just walk in and be rolling around for a day and be like, Oh yeah, I'm a wrestler now. Like to really be good enough to make everything look real and, you know, to have psychology in a match, like, and to have it entertaining from start to finish without killing each other. It's it's a really tough challenge. And there's just some, I guess, Pat and Brian just really know how to, you know, they just taught us in a way. They're willing to teach you to be the best that you can be if you're willing to learn and to take the criticism and to take the time to learn the right way. Some people just want the easy way out and just to learn spots, learn how to do a match. Not everyone wants to learn the basics and how to keep each other safe. So it's all about who your trainers are and uh, if the person really is willing to learn and to work. It's all it takes, I guess. <laughs> awesome. We'll say, to, uh, <laughs> we'll say hi to uh, Aaron. Aaron, what's up, man? How you guys doing? Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, – you actually read my mind, Jacob uh, – I wanted to touch on uh, the first time I, I saw you, Chris, was at uh, Crowning Achievement 2019 at Creative Pro. And uh, getting to see you win that battle royale was uh, excellent. And uh, what was it like being chosen to uh, be the Creative Pro champion? How, you know, how'd you feel? And uh, what was that honor like? Um, well, it was the Creative Pro TV champion. Cause there's two, there's two main belts now. So it's the TV champion I got to be. And I wasn't the first pick. I got picked because VSK uh, got his collarbone knocked out. So I got picked to take his spot. Um, uh, it was an honor to be the first one though, because I was pushing Brian and Pat so hard to be able to let them do let them let me do intergender matches on our sh on our um, school shows um, because I was becoming more experienced and there wasn't really any girls at the school and we had to keep bringing in other people and whatnot uh, just so I could have a match and I was just like let, let me just help out some of the newer people and then I think just my willingness to help the school get more credibility and whatnot and just you know just keep continuing to put on matches i think they just really saw something in me and uh i don't know it, it I mean like i said like i wasn't even supposed to be in the match or originally i ended up wrestling twice that day because uh vsk was hurt and he had to uh not be able to defend or wrestle for the title so um the fact that they had just let me wrestle twice in the blistering heat if I'm correct, it was super hot that really? day, right? It's like over or outside, no AC. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was a gross day, and I don't know. I don't know how I did it. I don't know why people <laughs> let me achieve these accomplishments. I don't really know what it is that I do that is so special that people see in me. But it is an honor to look back and see how much I've done in a short amount of time, and I. I don't know. I'm, I'm forever grateful for everyone that's believed in me. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, uh, I have to admit, you definitely have something because uh, I was very impressed by the end of that. When I saw, you know, you, you. you involved with AEW, I got so excited. I was like, ah, oh, somebody from uh, Long Island is making it. That's that's awesome. And uh, just as one uh, last follow up, uh, I'm curious, do you... Uh, who did you work with at Create a Pro? Are you most excited about seeing really uh, burst out onto the uh, onto television or a, a bigger stage? Um, everyone really. Uh, you know, there wasn't really much Creative Pro recognition for some reason uh, in other places. I don't know. People, I may. Every, I'm just gonna assume everyone was just so scared that we'd be so good and we'd take all the spotlight. Um, but. 
fact that we'd, uh, that we're everyone, so many people, Creative Pro is literally taking over AEW unintentionally. Don't know <laughs> why, but it's just happening that way. And uh, I'm just so excited to see all these people that helped train me and helped uh, to see, like, to get me to where I am, to be working with them now on, like, the big, big time. I'm working with my family. Like, literally, I hate that I'm going to say this, but started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you for your time, Chris, and uh, good luck to you, and uh, I hope that uh, women's title is in your room. Thank you. I hope so, too. <laughs> Thanks, care. Aaron. And uh, Nick, will say hi to uh, Axel. What's up, man? Oh, hey, what's up? Go OSU. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, I, I definitely could answer that question as far as, like, what do people see in you? I mean, as far as me as a fan, um, it's very rare to have, like, the athleticism and the power that you have. Like, that combination is very rare. I think that's, you know, in my, in my estimation, why AEW signed you. Not only that, you're young, so you're only going to get even better. Um, it, you know, I, I'm most sad about it because we don't, we don't, we haven't seen you a lot in AEW, and I see a lot of the great matches you've had, like with Intergender on the independent scene, and like if I really want to get a great AEW longer match, I have to watch Dark because they actually give you guys time to like perform. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to you know AEW investing in the women. Um, the question I had for you is, um, I really enjoy some of the intergender matches that you've had on the independent scene. Um, do you have any anyone that you haven't worked on worked with on the AEW roster that would be like a wish list for you on the intergender level? Ooh, ooh, that's good. Uh, ooh, I I mean, obviously Cody for sure. That would yeah. be. Awesome. Uh, I feel like it'd be really fun to wrestle Kenny. Oh um, yeah. Ooh. Oh, there's so many. Oh, I, I, I'm down to do an intergender match with every every guy on the roster. I've wrestled a decent amount of guys on the roster yeah. before too. Yeah, so, like Silver, uh, Orange Cassidy. Just yep. Uh, yeah. I wrestled Alex Reynolds. I've wrestled. Yep. Um, I wrestled MJF actually. Uh, I wrestled. Uh, Bear Country um, in a tag match and uh, Bear Bronson in a singles match before. Um, who else? I, that might that might actually only be it, but it's a decent amount, I will say. Um, so getting to wrestle with some of them again would be great, or being able to wrestle any any guy really. So um, I'm, I'm my one, it's been a great time. Uh, my one last question is my buddy, um, Anthony Bercorny. It's his birthday. He's a huge fan. He's been trying to get on to ask you a question. Can you please give him a birthday shout out for me? His name is Anthony, you said? Yeah. Yes. Anthony. Right. Happy birthday, Anthony. I hope you have the galaxy's greatest birthday today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Axel. Thank you. Next, we'll say hi to uh, Hector. Hector, what's up, man? Hi, how are you, Chris? So uh, my question was, I've seen you wrestle on the independence a couple of times. Um, where are some of your favorite places to work on the independence? Uh, my favorite place to wrestle on the independence? Is that what you said? A couple, yeah. Like You can name like two or three. Okay. Um, mm. uh, do you mean promotions or like buildings? venues yeah promotions because i was at the windy city classic 2019 when you beat uh jessica habit for the woman just havoc for the woman's title and that was okay, cool yes, so i'm exactly. curious so, yeah, i do love uh, to wrestle that building that's um uh i think it's mm -hmm. bourbon street in chicago i do love that yeah. building uh all all of the places beyond has ran um or yeah beyond mm -hmm. we've worked at electric haze for a long time um what is it? The White Eagle Hall in both of those in Massachusetts and Worcester. Um, we wrestled at a casino one time. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. I can't remember. It was for American Rana, though. Uh, the one that I where I had the cage match with Kimberly. That was yeah. really cool to wrestle in 
you know, um, uh, where else have I wrestled? I've wrestled in a lot of buildings, um, uh, for a lot of promotions. Uh, I've also, this kind of isn't like a, a real mainstream wrestling, but FSCW, the cosplay stuff where we wrestle at all of the super cons of the conventions as not ourselves. Those are, that's some of the most fun I've ever had, uh, doing super silly stuff as silly comic book characters. So those are some of my favorites. And just another quick question. Um, what is it like uh, working with Tony Khan? Because he seems like a Tony, person that any person would love to work for. Tony is an angel. Literally the nicest person in the whole wide world. He is seriously the greatest anyone could ever work for and i'm not just saying that because he he writes my checks uh i am saying it because he is genuinely just such has such a good heart and he's just the sweetest person in the whole wide world he's amazing he seems like that's what i wanted to ask uh we look yeah. forward to seeing you soon and take care of yourself thank you thanks hector uh, next, we'll say hi to Kenny. Kenny, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, uh, thank you so much, both of you, for doing this. Um, I'm definitely a huge fan, Chris. Uh, I actually tagged you on Instagram at one point when I got my new ferret because we named our ferret after ferrets after you and Orange. So um, yeah, Aww. I yeah, she's sleeping. Also, I would bring her up to the camera. But um, so, what's it like being uh, the lone alien on the roster? Being the lone alien on the roster, I mean, mm -hmm. it's alienating, one might say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's cool. You're kind. I'm kind. I've kind of been the only alien everywhere, so it's, it's nice okay. to be original. No, it's it's nice because the breath of fresh air that you brought to the women's division is wonderful. Um, I can't wait to have you back on TV. Everybody here in my family is a huge fan. Um, I'm hoping that my terrorist of a five-year-old doesn't storm in the room in a moment because she has a habit of doing this on the uh, meet and greets. But um, seriously, thank you so much. Is there, I know everybody asks so many great questions and it's some that I would want to ask, but what is the one thing that you're looking most forward to in like say the next year, injury aside? I mean, I know you're looking forward to getting back, but um, I mean, I would imagine you want the, the strap on you and would be an amazing women's champion, but anything aside from that? Um, I really hope to just continue to help elevate the women's division. And I'm not saying it's all just on me to do that, but I, I know the work ethic that I have and how willing I would be to be the quote unquote workhorse of the division if that's what's needed. And I'm willing to, obviously, like you said, injury aside, but I'm just so willing to get back in the ring and push every girl on the roster to their limits and hopefully be good enough and find, get enough belief in us to be a main event one day. It previous to everything happening between COVID and then your injury and whatnot. Oh, it, it seemed like it was going to ramp up that way, that it would be just a fun, like phenomenal culmination of it all. So I don't know. It's very excited. I, I can't wait to have you back. Um, what was it like, like uh, coming up in the, the Northeastern scene? Because I actually had moved out here from the West coast not too long ago and was so excited to be able to see like indie wrestling out here. And then I got to see like one ESW show that orange headlined at, and then COVID. So I, I, I don't know. I, I could only imagine how amazing the whole scene is out here. And, and getting to see some of your indie matches was phenomenal. So I couldn't even imagine. But um, aside from that. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I would say, super fortunate to be in the Northeast wrestling area um, because that's where a lot of really good platforms, uh, a lot of good training is, and um, it's just a really good area to be if you're getting started in wrestling, for sure. Because, um, like, I was able to get on to Beyond and Limitless really early on in my career, and those were two of the bigger platforms that really, like, got my name out there. Um, so I was just super fortunate to 
have that so nearby um, and to be able to work with them so consistently. Uh, it's hard when you live in the middle of nowhere and there's not a lot going on. There's a lot, but in the Northeast, everything is just so condensed. Just popularity, not popularity, uh, population wise, everything, everything is here. Um, so there's so many areas for venues, for opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of small promotions, a lot of big promotions in the area. It's just very fortunate that you can have so much going on it was only having to, to drive within three hours. And that's that's a short drive for an independent race. Yeah. No, I, I definitely understand. Yeah, because like I said, I was out in Portland and, uh, you know, a few indie shows would roll out here and there. And then uh, it was still kind of like you'd have to drive for a hot minute and you get to see like the five here and there. But uh, being out here, it's like, yeah, sweet. And no, COVID sucks. Mm -hmm. So Every seriously, though, you can see a show. Yeah, and but I seriously cannot wait to have you back on TV. Um, I, I'm glad we've got to see a little bit on BTE, particularly today's episode made me smile. So <laughs> thank you, thank you for being you. Thank you for being the galaxy's best alien. I it makes me so happy. It makes me so happy to watch wrestling. And thank you so much. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. That means so much to me. We have uh, three more for you, Chris. We're going to say hi to uh, David first. David, what's up, man? Hello, Christy. It's been a long time since the days of WSU. How are you doing? My gosh, it's been years and years. You know, I've seen you grow as a person, and, and we know that as a fan of your work. And, you know, look at you now. 2021 is the year of Chris, Christy Star Starland, you know. And when the comeback is right, you're going to be ready for, the, for it. I'm so proud of what you have done and come a long way and beyond wrestling. Um, just so many good moments of your career. That's, you know, you're going to, you're going to go places. That's really, you know, why I love watching you and hopefully you could come back to New, New Jersey and <laughs> wrestle, Thank you. For, wrestle for goddesses of war because uh, we've just had Riley, Bat uh, Riley Shepard and a whole bunch of other ladies have been coming in and knocking the house down. You need to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will definitely try to, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Good to hear from you, and Happy New Year's. Dave, you don't have a question? What? You don't, you don't have a question? That was it. Okay. <laughs> you have a great one then, David. Have a good one, buddy. We'll say hi to, uh, we'll say hi to Eric next. <laughs> Eric, what's hey. up, man? Hey, hi, Jacob. Hi, Chris. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, uh, I just got off the phone with my wife. She unfortunately works nights. Uh, we both watch, have watched you since uh, your in, until your injury. Um, she wanted to know where you came up with the nose boop. Uh, so originally the nose boop thing, thing was just taken from ET, you know, and it would. I was only just going to like the forehead and whatnot. And, uh, you know, some great minds of AEW told me to, like, just do the nose and stuff like, like that. So it was it always okay. just started as just like my finger from E.T., but that's Probably. all it was. Okay. She's fascinated with that and, and does that to me often. <laughs> um, a, a lot of the women uh, in the independents have come through Cleveland, and I've met a lot of them that are on AEW Dark. And you can't uh, meet a more nicer bunch of women. And like you said, you loved working for AEW, and and uh, I can vouch that that it, it looks like a great company to work for. And uh, everybody, it seems like you, everybody just gets treated fairly, especially the women. And the exposure on Dark is just is just great for you know. And personally, I could say, oh, I saw them. <laughs> before they yeah. were on TV. So that's really cool. But yeah, uh, continued sure. success, and uh, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Tell your Thanks. wife, she's a great worker. She's hard, we oh, appreciate her. I, she's on the front lines with the COVID. She, she's a, uh, an x-ray tech, so she deals with it every day. Yeah, so, give her a God bless her. <laughs> I will, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, the last one of the night, we'll say hi to uh, Daniel. What's up, Daniel? 
Oh, Daniel doesn't want to. Hey, uh, how's it going, us. guys? I hope you guys are staying safe go. out there. So, um, so my question is, what is your next? What is your biggest accomplishment going to be in AEW? What is the one thing you want to accomplish there? Um. Uh, I feel like the obvious answer is to win the belt. Um. Which obviously that is of course something I want to do, uh, but like I've said a little bit earlier on, I feel, uh, I feel like I have the potential to be a main event of a pay per view. Hopefully, um, that's one thing I definitely want to hmm. accomplish. I've main evented for a lot of companies before. Uh, I've main evented in just women's matches, uh, intergender matches. I've, I know I have it in me to be a main event but that's something that's just going to come with time and i have to have an opponent that's gonna that i'm gonna be able maybe just me or we'll have to find the person where we'll bring it out of each other to be able to be that main event another i do have one other small thing that i want to do very soon it's not going to happen soon but i really want to have a hardcore match and i really want to get color on aew just to prove how hardcore i am on tv but we'll see. I'll take the little beats <laughs> instead. Yeah. And my my last question is: What is, who is your dream opponent to face? Oof. I don't necessarily have a dream opponent. Um, I just want to wrestle everybody that wants to wrestle me. But of of all, if I do have to say one person, the one person I've never gotten to have a match with. That, that I really want to is Brian Myers, uh, Kurt Hawkins, my trainer. I've had a match with Pat Buck, and I want, I've teamed with Pat Buck, but I've never gotten to wrestle Brian on a show, and that is my one goal before either of us quits wrestling, is to have a match with Brian. Okay. Well, that was it. Thank you guys for doing this, and take care. Thanks, Daniel. Thank uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, where can everybody find you on social Thank media? It's your pro wrestling tea shop and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Twitter and Instagram both are at call me Chris Stat. Um, pro wrestling tees backslash Chris Statlander, or you could go to shop AEW, uh, look up Chris Statlander. Um, you could go to pro wrestling tees on the AEW store and look at Chris Statlander. Um, you look at you just type in Chris Statlander on the internet and see what pops up and it's probably going to be me. So you just <laughs> type in, go to the Google www.chrisstatlander. Well, I don't have a website, but you know, just look, just Google Chris Statlander and you'll find it. You'll find me. All right, thank you, everybody.